And we're back from our new podcasting studio. <laughs> yeah. You should just do it at a different place every week from now on. Yeah, yeah. Well, this could be our spot for a while. I'm going to get some acoustic treatments in here. Um, it's officially getting sweaty here in Florida. I'm freaking, I got that, you know, that, that film sweat from working on the uh, outdoor kitchen down the street. But we're here in my garage. This is where we're going to be doing... You know, I think videos are a podcast for the foreseeable future, at least the next six months or so, uh, until we can figure out what we're going to do, you know, with the new building. So we've got two more big projects to finish before I can, you know, get started on that building, and then we'll get, you know, we'll get into it. Let's get to some questions here. We'll kick it off. Uh, let's see, Harley 17. Good morning, gentlemen. Besides the Merca three-inch polisher, which three-inch polisher would you recommend for a weekend warrior? Um, the, the best electric corded polisher, I think, is the Flex XFE 12. Uh, it's, what is it, like 260 bucks or something, 300 bucks, something like that. Um, the Griot's is decent. You know, the Flex is much better. Um, but the Flex corded is better than the Rupes, I think. So I'd always used the, um, the Rupes version, the, uh, uh, the Bigfoot, the 15, 15 Mark III. And then uh, use the Flex three inch, not the not the PXE eighty, not the cordless one, but the you know the corded one, uh, and then you know then use the Nano. Um, and so now I'm using the Milwaukee cordless, the Merca, and then the you know the Nano. Mike McCullough says, "Hey Matt, I tried Snake River Farms for the first time, and man, was it good." Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, their steaks are great. It's hard to hard to do anything else now. It's hard to even go, go back. Hard to go to a restaurant. Uh, this is from Anuj, who I think he's the uh, he's the guy who won the M3, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Down in South Florida. Hey Chris, I have a question for the podcast. He sent this to me email. Um, over the past few years, we've witnessed numerous innovative breakthroughs and disruptions in the detailing process, many of which you you've helped spearhead. From advancements in coatings to the introduction of pressure washing solutions and cordless polishers, the industry has seen nice transformations. Mm -hmm. Looking ahead, what disruptions do you anticipate in which specific areas? And then he suggested perhaps PPF. I forget who I was talking about this with recently. Um, I think it was Anthony and uh, Anthony from the Rag Company. The I think we both kind of had the same analysis, or same results of analysis in that it seems as though the exponential, you know, that, that sort of parabolic up, upward trajectory and change and new improvement in process, you know, when coatings were introduced, say, 15 years ago, uh, and then you take, say, from 10 years ago, when I started the YouTube channel, we've seen a, you know, pretty tectonic shift in... Um, you know, we had long throw DAs come out in the last 15 years and, and sort of with the Rupes stuff sort of change how people polish. Then of course you had, you know, the continued improvement of the chemical resistance and the look and feel of coatings uh, and then, you know, numerous other products to, you know, complement all of that stuff. Uh, and then of course, you know, I had a little say in, you know, changing the washing process. Uh, but I don't know, I, I don't know that there's, I mean, when we're not talking so much about, it's not like a computer, it's not like technology where, you know, it sure seems we're on the cusp of, you know, of continued, you know, even, even faster speed of evolution with AI and stuff like that and quantum computing. In detailing, I mean, it's still paint, unless something drastically changes with the paint on the car, uh, I don't know that there's that big of a you know future delta, but who knows? Maybe maybe somebody innovates something crazy. I think if you had stretchable or more stretchable, if it was if PPF became contourable like a wrap vehicle wrap with the same level of protection and look, that could be a, you know a big a big shift, tectonic shift. Uh, but I don't, and I have a pretty decent inside purview into what's coming and what's not. Um, I'm privy to have lots of NDAs I've signed on different products and things like that over the years, but unless somebody's holding out on me, I don't, I don't think there's, there's, there's going to be small incremental changes, not this, gener you know, this drastic parabolic upward trajectory and change and improvement. I think now we're just going to see little tweaks here and there, um, and 
hopefully can hopefully will continue to improve the process. You know, I'm trying to make press all bottles great, trying to make a little incremental, a little detailed things better in, in the process. But I don't foresee any any substantial shift. But I've never been a really good predictor of the future, so we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Mike McCullough says, "Hey Matt, I plan on buying the OG pressure washer setup." Is it possible to go from the pressure washer to PEX with a ball valve to turn it off and on? Sure, yeah. Um, from not, we'll be saying into the pressure washer with PEX. So the inlet with PEX you can, but outlet certainly not. You know, wouldn't be able to handle the, the pressure. Um, but yeah, you could, you could hard plumb it right up to it. I generally suggest you at least have some sort of jumper hose somewhere um, because of the vibration of the of the pressure washer over time, when you hard plumb, you know it tends to rattle. Even if it's sweated on copper, it tends to the vibration tends to cause leaking in the future. But yeah, on the inlet you can go PEX to it. Uh, on the outlet, certainly not. It's got to be high pressure hose. All right, Dan Pfeiffer, our buddy up in Minnesota, says good afternoon. Looking forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday. He's coming to visit us. Nice. Okay, uh, Philippe. Our buddy in Canada. Hello, everyone from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Any updates on Canada? Yeah, we're coming up, uh, was it March or April 1st? Yeah, April 1st or 2nd, something like that, to take a tour of what will likely be our new distribution facility. And then from there, we're looking at, you know, hopefully late summer, we'll start shipping you know, some of the first products. Uh, Anthony says, Matt, if your car had frontal PPF, and matte decals. After polishing the paint, how would you ceramic coat it? Halo on the PPF and decal, or just the whole car with CSL? Any worry with overlap? Yeah, I mean, I haven't tried V2 of Halo. Uh, you know, there was a period of time where Halo wasn't really bonding very well with Expel. Uh, I'd be inclined to try it, but I know that CSL works. Uh, I mean, both of these cars here have CF, CSL, XO on top of the, on top of the PPF. Uh, or maybe CSU XO. Uh, so I'm mean, inclined to do that, but I, I think I'm sure that Halo 2, version 2, is probably pretty good. So I'd consider doing Halo on the, on the PPF surfaces and, and vinyl surfaces and then do CSL XO on the, on the rest. Oh, or do XO on all of it. But um, I'm pretty sure Halo is toppable with XO. Kevin says, just bought a used AMG and the wheels are awful. Flex PX80 with attachment to get in detail spaces or Rupes Hybrid Nano. Seems like more detail can be done on the wheels with flex attachment. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if you go and start digging into some of the, was it APS or APC or something like that that makes all kinds of um, attachments for the PX80, um, you know, you'd be easier to do the barrels with the three inch. Uh, but I think that, you know, the one inch is probably going to get your you know, get the, the one inch version is going to be best on the Nano for some sections because the head on the PX80 is so much bigger. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd want to have both. So that way I could, you know, do, do the project, do one wheel at a time. Stephen wants to know, he's curious as to why you suggest Husky over New Age cabinets. If you had to choose, choose between these two. Uh, also, when you install the Pro Slack cabinets, will you be adding them to the store? Um, yeah, we're, we're, you know, the pro slot's pretty excited. We're pretty excited to hopefully start working together soon. Uh, we're going to be doing our, our pro slot set up in Wava's garage here soon. We just have, you know, I signed up for too many things. Um, so we're, we're, we're working through all that stuff. Um, to answer your question, I mean, New Age is just so bad that, like, you know, if I'm going to spend, you know, a similar amount of money, I think the Huskies at least look better. You know, I don't think the New Age look good. Uh, they look cheap. They look kind of, I don't know, it, the, the Husky, that all black, matte black finish, they're both going to come similarly damaged. They're both similar construction. Um, you're going to have to fight the good fight to you know, try to get them to send you a set of, because it's hard to ship those kind of cabinets because they're shipping them like not the same level of freight that you're, you are used to for you know, industrial type stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny. New Age sent me an email the other day, you know, they're, they're, they're so oblivious, you know, big companies like that are so oblivious to what's going on. They're like, you know, we think you should, uh, you should you know, consider trying out our cabinets and becoming an affiliate. I said, no, you know, I'm, I'm usually, you know, I'm representing, you know, higher end cabinets. It really doesn't fit. 
They said, well, we have many professionals using our pro series. And I just left the email at that. I didn't respond. You know, I initially started to respond, you know, there's nothing pro about the uh, pro series. They're just not, I mean, I don't know what I would have done had I been younger, but I probably would have continued to wait and try to do something, you know, Sabre or something like that. Um, at the time, there was Sabre you could buy for like 4,000 bucks, I mean, awesome. Versus, you know, New Age at 1,800 for a similar setup. So I could pay double, but have something that's like 80% of the way there to the, the really good stuff. So hopefully Pro Slot, Pro Slot's gonna be a little bit higher priced, but hopefully it'll fill our mid-tier void. Tim Gray says, hello from New Zealand. Hey, good morning, Tim, thank you. Uh, Brad says, Matt is way louder than Chris. That's usually the case, <laughs> but there might be something audio too. You got it, okay. Um, Miguel says, hey Matt, what do you think of the new active pressure washer that's coming out? Have you used it yet? Um, I've got it sitting somewhere. I got a yarn building still? Yeah, I've got to do, I got to test it out. Um, you know, I'm inclined, we're, we think that the price point kind of makes it a bit irrelevant. I think it needs to be like, you know, 500 bucks. I just think that for, for $650, I mean, you're, you're in, you know, you're at the same price as a Comet and you're in AR territory. Um, both are quieter, a little bit better serviceable, you know, they're not coming from, you know, from, they're coming from, from Italy. Um, I need to test it. Uh, I'm just going off of what, you know, Tommy's told me from, from playing with it. So I might bring it over here this weekend and, and mess around with it. <laughs> Brian says, uh, I saw yesterday that you were getting into bougie jeans. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Have you tried AG or Hudson? Although no. in your world, these may be je jeans for the poors. <laughs> yeah, those haven't come up in my searches. I bought um, Iron Heart, I believe. I ordered some Iron Heart jeans, some APC. I bought a pair of Shot, Noah NYC. Uh, so I'm testing it out. So far, my favorites have been the APC jeans. So, and then I bought a few more Levi's to, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to beat. Price-wise, yeah. Yeah. How much is a pair of AC jeans? Like 270 for APC, you know, somewhere in the 220, 270. The, the uh, Iron Heart that I bought were like 400, 380, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What's Le Levi's isn't all that, what are they? 20 bucks, yeah. 30, okay. 40 bucks, you know. Because you, it's, I bought, be. I went to Kohl's for the first time oh, ever wow. the other day. Never been in Kohl's. Did you use Kohl's cash to pay? No, God no. I finally, I finally don't get that crap in the mail anymore. Mm -hmm. Kate, we, Ryan and I went to the outdoor store, and then Kate was in the Sephora area and in Kohl's, and so then we're like, we got tired of walking around um, the outdoor store, and uh, so we walked in there. I'm like, this is the first time I've ever been in Kohl's. And I'm like, oh sweet, they have Levi's. Let me see what they have. Of course, it was a like an explosion of trash everywhere. It was just gross. <laughs> Matt and Coles, I would have liked to have been there for that. Yeah. I've been a couple times, not really my style either. Uh, Perry Ocean Auto Designs. Says, hey Matt, I've never seen you mention Flex 3401. Yeah. That seems to be my go-to. What are your opinions on that one? Well, the 3401 is the sledgehammer, you know, that's the, that's the force rotation machine. Um, I think you're either DA or you're force rotation, and I'm a DA guy. It's just that the force rotation feels like it's walking around on me everywhere. I just, I just don't like a force rotation machine. It's just, to me, it doesn't feel like as elegant. You can still get a similar, I feel like that machine beats me up a lot more. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you, it's, but the, the, the Flex 3401 is easier to learn, you know, because it doesn't stall. So it's easier to do edge work, it's easier to, you know, polish contours. Uh, but, you know, once you've learned a DA, I just think that a DA f just feels better, smoother, less uh, fatiguing, uh, and I feel like, you know, I can get a better result with a, with a DA. Uh, let's see, our buddy Big Head James Clark says, Greetings, Matt and Chris. I'm enjoying the podcast from Ireland on vacation while rocking my OG black charcoal snapback. It's been a joy to catch up on the excellent content while on the plane over. Nice. Fun over there, James. I think you know we'll be making a European trip sometime this year. I'm gonna go over there and start to see what it feels like. What's first on the list over there? I don't know. Probably Ireland, Scotland, something like that. Gotcha. London, not sure. 
Um, Campbell says, hey Matt, where can I find slash buy more Lutron smart light accessories? You did a tour on your house once where you had mm -hmm. some unique light switches that I don't see on their website. Yeah, I mean, best thing to do is we have the ones that I use on the OG site, right? So you have the RRD stuff, so that's all the RAW2 stuff. Um, if you need Caseta stuff, you, you, know, you can email me and I can you know, get you the Caseta. So our plan is to get the Caseta and, um, and RAW2 and then when RAW 3 becomes actually you know, available or readily available, we'll probably maybe make the transition to RAW 3. Um, but the, we have all the stuff on the site um, and uh, you know, just narrowed it down to the, the things that you'll need, you know, the, the various dimmers and, and um, switches that you would need for the system. Yeah, okay, Campbell, I just did a quick search on Lutron and we have a page there that you can just click on the Lutron page. Yep. Um, Maverick says, Matt, I have a two car, 24 by 24 garage with offset garage door, mm -hmm. center TV cabinet array on the back wall, uh, or based on the garage door. Um, I center it on the back wall. Um, you know, that way you get the most efficient use of the back wall space. And, um, you know, even though your door is a little bit off, I, I, you know, when you're in the garage, I want it in the middle for function. Another garage question here from Jeffrey Baptista. Lighting, lighting, lighting. What's the best lighting for a 20 by 20 garage with eight foot ceilings? I mean, the best would be uh, um, Cree LS, the stuff that we have in here. Uh, so it would be LS fours and LS eights. If it's 20 by 20, you probably, I would probably do six eight footers, six 12,000 lumen eight footers in that. And actually, you know what I would do since your ceilings are lower, I'd probably do the 8,000 lumen version. Um, you're gonna do them in 5K, I would do them in square. Um, what are they, 325 bucks a piece? And so you've got, um, if you're gonna do you know, six of those, you're at uh, what, 1,800, 1,900 bucks, yeah. Two grand to, to do it. Now, you can do it for a lot less doing the OG uh, Prime Light. You know, they're made by Prime Lights. Uh, they are, um, what, 180 bucks a piece or something like that. So you can do it for half, half the, the, half the money. Yeah, four bulbs, 100 and 145 bucks, yet it's, like, it's less than half. So instead of two grand, it'd be 1,000 bucks, you know, 900 bucks to do. And you would do, I would do the same thing, six, four bulb. Not the six bulb, but the four bulb fixtures, because your ceiling height. Six bulb is just going to put out too much light. You want to disperse the light, get the light spread out, um, but not so intense because your ceilings are lower. It gives the light less ability for it to, you know, sort of um, paint the area, if you will. I got a couple active questions, 2.0. Okay. Uh, from Brendan first. When doing a wall mounted active 2.0, mm -hmm. is it worth it to start with a wall mount and get filtration later on or wait to do it all until I can afford the whole package? No, I think you could get away with just doing it and then adding in later. Because what you'd probably do is just run a, run a hose line up the wall or something, just something temporary uh, until you're going to figure out you know, whether you're going to do our Prevo solution or you know, you're going to do something a little less expensive with some PEX or something like that. But I think you can do it now. You can just use an inlet hose or something if you have a hose bib nearby. <coughs> but just having the pressure washer hose on the wall is worth it. That's the most valuable part of having the pressure washer on the wall, not having to get the thing out and roll out a hose. So I'd, I'd do it now, and then you could always add DI later. All right, then Lucas says, what are your thoughts on affixing an Active 2.0 to a shelf? I can't use vibration clamps like I can on a Krenzla. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, it's not super heavy. Um, if you have your inlet hose set up and, you're, and you have your jumper hose and you kind of tack your jumper hose to your shelf, and it's not going anywhere. If it fell, it would only fall to where, you know, a foot to where your jumper hose is. So we don't really tie down the 2.0s. Uh, James wants to know, uh, what was the pad that you recommended to polish glass? Um, if, you, if you really want to affect the glass most, you would get a rayon pad. So you go to carprous.com, carpro-us.com. Uh, that's Corey Sites, Guys Limit Car Care, and he has rayon pads on there. It's a real thin, real nasty pad. Uh, but normally, if I'm just trying to clean up the glass, I just use my microfiber pad and a, you know, something like Sonex Cut Max. 
just turn your machine all the way up and hammer down on it. Remember, you're not really polishing glass, you're just cleaning it. To polish glass takes hours and hours, so you would use Carposiri glass, you'd need to get a spray bottle to spritz it to reactivate it, and even just to affect it just slightly, um, you're talking you know, 45 minutes in one spot. You know, it's not really worth that effort. I'd rather just get new glass. Jim TL15 wants to know, any updates on the new OGHQ? When can they learn more and see more about it? Um, we have a video coming probably next week that uh, Wob will be working on. And um, just to introduce you, show you guys the move. And then we're going to do a tour next week, an updated tour. Come on, Chase. Want to say hi to everybody? Hey, buddy. We have an updated tour, and then I'm not sure what will come after that as we start to work on various projects there, modernizing it. He didn't take off and run away? He's, nope, he's yeah. got his collar on. Oh, right. He's good now. What, if his buddy was here, what are you trying to? Mm, they've been good lately, and we cranked up the uh, juice on his shocker. Got it. Uh, let's see, Neil says, hey Matt, I mistakenly purchased the new MTM wide mouth. I understand now why you don't like it. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's just not good. You know, it's a real Band-Aid and, you know, that's, we were waiting on something great. So that's why I was a little behind the market and um, waiting and waiting and developing and, you know, they just missed the mark. So we, that's why we made the change. Chris Ferditi says, happy Friday, guys. When can we expect built hamber? I don't know. I don't know what's taking them so long. I'm ready. We're working on it, Christopher. It's yeah, Chris is put progress. Chris in charge of it. He's trying to get whatever last bit of information. Uh, for your, um, all you guys that are watching, Pete is very adamant about pricing. He does not want price gouging. He does not want um, you know people having to overpay for the product. Um, but we we're, so we're still working out like the container cost and stuff. I want it to be as cheap as possible too, um, but we still need to make a living. We still need to pay the people to ship it to you and, and have a warehouse. So um, we're you know we're I don't know we keep going back and forth on the on the that final sales price because the shipping price keeps adjusting and so we're trying to figure out you know what is the shipping cost. Um, he just wants to be very sure. You know we don't know each other long term. We think we we think we're we're going to be a good partnership, and I, you know I don't I have no interest in price gouging anything, despite what some people think. <laughs> um, I just want it to be the retail price. We're not going to run it on sale. We're not going to do all kinds of weird crap with, with pricing. We're going to keep the pricing flat for everybody, and um, we want, but we need to make sure that it's not losing money when we bring it over here. You know, so because it costs a lot to get it here. Uh, Zerwich04 says, hey guys, the new podcast studio looks great. <laughs> it's the most expensive podcast studio in the world. Uh, let's see. Vince says, looking good, Matt. Oh, I'm, nice I'm trying. I'm, uh, I was in the gym every day this week. Nice. So I'm dragging a little bit because this is the, I was gone for months. I lost, I'd say I lost about 20% you know, from my peak where I was you know, three months ago when I first went to you know, the LZ compound. And um, and so then I'm on the 5 a.m. shuffle, and it takes a good couple of weeks, or maybe close to a month, to get back in the groove. I had a pretty decent open workout workout today. Yeah, um, I'm not doing the open specifically. Uh, Figures, I mean, the open started day one of my you know first day back in you know in, in at home, because it started out at LZ. I was you know working out seven days a week, and then it was six days, and then it was five days, and then it was three days, and then it was two days, and then three days, and then one day, and then three days, and then one day, and then no days. You know, the last two weeks or so, we're just trying to get it done. So, yeah. It's gonna look yeah. you up, but I guess you're not participating. No, I'm not participating. Okay. This Are morning I did, um, I did all right this morning. I'm just kind of coasting, I'm making sure to, try to I don't, you don't have to scale the open workout, it's pretty easy. Um, but I did, I'm going to do eight rounds and 260 meters. So eight rounds, 26 reps today, just coasting, you know, just kind of cruising it. All my, all my double runners unbroken except for the first round. I did 47 and three. Um, and so the workout was 300 meter row, uh, 10 deadlifts at 185 and then, um, 50 double runners. I'm kind of sad because I would certainly have made the next round had I, been in shape and so the first workout I did in like 14 minutes I could do that in like 
mid eights, I think, you know, and so I was just kind of walking around, just not trying to, you know, because that was day one, I come back and I've got to do uh, that workout was 21 uh, dumbbell snatches at 50, 21 burpees over the dumbbell, 21, 21, 15, 15, 15, 15, 9, 9, 9, 9. Um, I did it 14 minutes, just kind of, I do, you know, 21 snatches and I walk around for a little bit and do the burpees and do seven bur sets of seven burpees and kind of, just because I didn't want to go that, to that dark place. Next year. Yeah, Next year. maybe. I don't really care about that. Uh, Spencer, our buddy up in the Dakotas, wants to know, hey Matt, what are your thoughts on the Bend Pack Max Jacks? I don't have the room to permanently mount a two post and also can't bury the HF7 as the shop I'm in is temporary. You know, I don't really like those and lots of people do. Uh, I find them to be annoying, you know, they're heavy, you gotta put them somewhere. Um, I prefer to have a couple of jacks and use Rhino ramps and jack stands. Um, I don't know, I know lots of people like the, uh, like the, the Ben Pack thingies or the quick jacks, but I prefer uh, is the Max Jack, is that the one that you, um, I think that might be different than the Quick Jack that he was talking about. I think they might be the uh, like portable thing. Yeah, those things, yeah, is, that is different. So yeah, I think that would be pretty cool to have. So you were thinking of something else? Yeah, the, the uh, Quick Jacks. Okay. So yeah, that's right. Max Jacks is basically like a portable two post lift. It's pretty, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, you still have to drill the concrete, you still have to have the ability to be able to do it, or to be able to, you know, concrete has to be sturdy enough, uh, but you can take them off and put them out of the way. So I, I do like that idea, what are they, was it 4,000 bucks for that? It's pretty decent, pretty decent solution, I think. I'd rather have that than quick jacks. Uh, we got a couple super chats here. First from our buddy Martin Fowler, $5 US. When might the press all stainless tips be available or for RYS? I'm feeling like they are a must. Yeah, I'm not sure. The Germans move very slowly. We placed our order, now we're just waiting. Waiting on them to produce them and get them on the water. Uh, next one from John Fries, $10 US. Nice. Hey Matt, I want to buy my first MacBook Pro. First, okay, cool. Yeah. What do you think of the new space black color? Yeah, that's the move. For sure, I think it's cool. He said he wishes the space gray was still available with the pro chip, but it's only space black or silver. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm wanting a space a space black version. So my next one will be will be that that's space gray. Space gray, okay. Silver is like a lighter color. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, when are we gonna test the Ego pressure washer? Um, are they even out yet? I mean. I think we have. We have one place. I think there's one at the Arm Building. Really? I think so. Oh well, maybe I'll grab that and test out the AR in that here next week. Or the active. Maybe this weekend. Yeah, yeah active. Whatever. Two point three. Two point three. Uh, Nick S says he did not succeed at your no caffeine challenge, by the way. <laughs> didn't, didn't quite make it, Nick. That's yeah. right, Nick. Just a little out of time. Yeah. Of time. Just quit that crap. Um, what are your thoughts on the new Rivians? Colby wants to know. It's stupid. I went and um, tried to place a hundred dollar. I did it before I saw it. I was trying to place a hundred dollar order. Uh, why? It needs to be bigger, not freaking smaller. Mm. Why don't we want it smaller? That that stupid SUV on stilts, like the car on stilts, is the dumbest concept. Macan, um, uh, the uh, like all the, like the the real their cars, you know, like the uh, Lexus LX. Yeah, yeah, like all these little baby SUVs. It just sits up taller. Why do we want to set up taller? I want to be low to the ground as possible. Stupid. Get yourself a, uh, a, a station wagon. It's way better. Yeah, it's freaking dumb. I don't want that. Kind of looks like the crappy bro. The R1S is a little too small. The R1's too small. I need it bigger. Why do they make it smaller? Uh, Alex wants to know, hey Matt, are you going to go to any March Madness games this year? I doubt it. Villanova's not. Looks like they'll be the, one of the last four out, unless they have, make some sort of run in the Big East tournament. But even then, I'm just gonna watch from my couch this year. Uh, Steven wants to know, can we possibly get a full list on the website that is categorized in items that Matt suggests? Like OG spec items in all types of la life. Uh, garage, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, and add on to it. Then he also follows up and say, it'd be nice to have a reference list for when my wife says we need new bathroom towels. I like that idea. 
Like the pillow start. question. And yeah, the, maybe I should start working on that. Bathroom towels, sheets. Yeah. That's kind of what I did with the original Obsessed Garage website. It was just, let's just put everything in one spot and link to where it, you know, where it, where it's coming from. The, the long guy heard we had a podcast now. second here. Yeah. I haven't heard the leaf blower in six months. <laughs> uh, Steve, no, sorry, Steven, that was your question. Uh, Golf 007 SD2. Getting ready for a full stage detail job. First okay. was going to be iron remover. Yep. Uh, and while it was doing its thing, it was going to foam the car on top via your decontaminating shampoo. Any objections uh, to that? No, first it should be get the car clean. Because iron remover doesn't do squat to anything but iron, All right? So you want to you want to wash it first, then remove the iron because you don't want to be dislodging, you know, which is unlikely. We don't want to be dislodging pieces of metal and then scratching the paint worse. Um, so again, unlikely that that happens. That you have big chunks of metal. It's more of like iron dust that embeds in the sort of the jaggedness. Like if you put clear coat under a under a microscope, it looks kind of jaggedy. And so you have areas that can kind of grab and hold on to iron dust. And so you're going to break that down chemically, uh, get that off the paint, uh, and then you'll do your, your, your you know, clay bar or your rag company, you know, clay sponge or whatever you're going to do to, uh, to, to get the final, you know, decon done, the mechanical part of the, uh, of the deconning process. Sunny Color says, hey, Matt, I just ordered the Merca. Beyond the extended time it would take to polish a car using a three inch, are there any other disadvantages versus a larger polisher? I'm just polishing my M3 and my wife's Merc. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna take you nine years to do it, you know. Um, your wrist is gonna be, you know, you're in a carpal tunnel by the end of it. But no, I mean, you can do a whole darn car with a three inch, you're just gonna do like 12 inch by 12 inch sections where you could be doing two foot by two foot sections on the hoods and roof and door panels and stuff like that. But you could certainly do it. And remember, there's no trigger lock on the Merca. You'll see what I'm talking about with not having a trigger lock. Uh, but you could certainly, you could do the whole car with a one inch if you wanted to. Um, there really shouldn't be a whole lot of disadvantage doing it. Maybe you can't finish quite as well, you know, as if you had a big, you know, big pad, but I think you can, you can get most of it done with a three inch, but I, I certainly wouldn't want to do that. Uh, another super chat here from Spencer, $4.99. Last question before I head out, which brand PPF do you like the most? My M3 is getting full optical PPF at Chicago Auto Pros soon. I haven't seen any of their stuff, but um, the, I believe the best PPF on the market, not necessarily for, for like total protection, but for like the best optical clarity, that is uh, Estec Dynashield. So John Clevin is the U.S. representative. He is great. You know, he's, he, he knows what good paint looks like. He is in, uh, he owns um, Metropolitan Detail in Seattle. He's the representative and sort of the owner of Estec U.S. And, um, you know, he's, he's the one that sort of spearheading, making sure that, that you know, the best PPF is here. Um, the problem with it is that uh, they don't have the templating and they don't have the support that Expel has. So although all of my cars have Expel on it, I would prefer to have Estec Dynashield. I think that's the best, you know, PPF currently available. But I haven't spent any time recently with any of the new SunTech stuff or some of the other brands that are out there. So maybe there's something that's better, but to date, what I've seen and owned and had, the, my, uh, my 991.2 GT3 RS had Estec on it, and it was amazing. Uh, Rod wants to know, do you have any thoughts on the Audi RS6? Yeah, I think it's great, um, but, you know, it, it's an understeer machine, so it, it lacks that fun factor. You know, like going around curves and stuff like that. But it's big horsepower, great straight line speed, great for all arounder if you're, you know, if you're in areas where it will snow. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's limitation. It's big, fat, heavy. You know, so not as fun to drive. Uh, Perry Ocean Auto Designs. Going back to Rivian for a second. Uh, have you seen the new Rivian R2, R3, R3X? What are your thoughts on the brand and user experiences slash warranties? I don't give a crap about warranties, but everything else is pretty fantastic. I mean, the thing has been great. 
It's, um, I think we've got 12,000 miles or something like that on ours. It's, um, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, let's see. LR says, if I want to mount an air hose reel to my wall, mm -hmm. I assume I'll need some piece of wood to span the studs and then screw the reel into that. Correct. What size piece of wood am I looking for? Uh, I think the bolt holes are five inches by five inch. So they're, you need, you need like a, say like an eight by eight square. Cause I think the holes are, Air hose reel, I forget. I don't have one in here. I think it's um, I think it's three by five. I think they're three inches apart and then five inches. Um, so you know if you do like a like a two by six plate, that would that would cover it. Here's your dimensions and in, you know and in Y. Yeah, on our site on the product page we have the. It would be in the description. Yeah. I'll come back to that then. Uh, Life is Lucci says, is the Golden Doodle a mini? Yeah. Yeah, he's a mini F1B Golden Doodle. So he's like, he's um, the cross between a, what is it, an F1 Golden Doodle and a mini Poodle. So he's like 25% golden retriever and 75% poodle, mini poodle. Here you go. Here's the dimensions that help any. Yeah. Of so the base size is six inch by six inch. So if you did a little two by six, you know, piece, um, it, it, that would cover it because your bolt hole, your mounting pattern is four inches left to right and five inches top to bottom. So your plate would be a little bigger than the, uh, you know, because two by six is what five and a quarter. So two by eight to be safe is what you know what you'd want to put you know across. And you don't want to put that on a wall. You want to cut a hole in the drywall and put a stringer in, and then re you know re drywall. Uh, and then life as Lucci follows up with: Are there any cons to having this breed of dog? Not really. I mean, it doesn't shed, it doesn't drool. And you um, said you were never getting a dog. They love you people. Like them. Um, they um, they don't drink water like ever. They barely drink any water. Eats twice a day, pretty simple. Um, you, you, the, I guess the drawback is they get matted, so you have to groom them, you know, at least once a month or so, once every couple of months. And um, but I don't know, he's pretty cool. But I think the um, the big ones are doofy looking, and I don't like those. That's what I thought we got. And I'm like, oh no. Uh, so you want you want to make sure, and you got to get them from a reputable breeder. You know. A, a golden doodle should cost you know somewhere in the three to five thousand dollar range. If you go get some some goof one, you're gonna end up with some monster. You know that's what happens to a lot of people. They think they're getting like I've, we haven't had any friends think they were getting one of him, and because they bought one for eight hundred bucks somewhere, you know some goofball breeding them, um, then they end up you, know, you end up with some mega mega dog. Yeah, some giant you know with a big snoot. It looks stupid. Yeah, so. Yeah, that was my requisite. If we're gonna do this, I think Chase was like 3,800 or something like that. But that was pre-pandemic, yeah. so they're probably more than that now for a mutt. You know, because they're not a purebred dog. They don't, they're not in the dog show or anything like that. But they, uh, to get you know reputable breeder, you want to you know go where you need to go to get one. All right, we got a friend in Europe asking a question here. So this is David. Yep. Uh, Matt, in the middle of buying my own house and looking forward to setting up my garage. I'd love to install Cree LS linear lights. Yep. I need you to set up OG distribution hub in Europe. Yep. Any timing on that? Mid to late next year. 2025. Let's see. Retro brand, Retro Band says, good afternoon. Any ideas on when the next car giveaway will be? Cheers from Salt Lake City, Utah. I don't have anything planned. Um, I'd like to try to not do one. Our next giveaway is in the summer. It's going to be another garage giveaway. Yeah, someone asked earlier, what's the update there on the this most recent winter? Any updates? Um, so we'll have our introductory video here in the next you know couple of weeks. We're just trying to catch back up from the LZ project, um, and we're going to have a really epic series going over what what you know every square inch of that project, and with. Delivery of it probably late this year, early next year. But we're gonna take you along, you know, a couple of videos a month, along for the ride of the process that we have to go through to build that garage out. 
I Gus has some experience with those max jacks. Said I had one of those portable two posts and ended up selling it. Hydraulics are not good and always leaked. Mm. And I didn't feel safe without an overhead crossbar. Mm. So a couple things to consider there, Spencer. Uh, Tony, yeah, Tony wants to know, Matt, are you getting the Cybertruck? No, no, I don't like it. It's weird looking. Von Frag U says, how do you determine correct tire pressure on custom wheels and tires? I usually just run the OE pressure, even though that's, you know, you may have a different profile. Uh, I start with OE pressure and then just kind of play with it there and see how the car feels. Um, but usually, you know, you're going to be hopefully somewhere in the reasonable size sidewall and reasonable size tire, maybe upsized a bit. Uh, but I run the pressures that says on the inner, you know, the door card on the inner, inner of the driver's side door and then, you know, work off of that. All right, our buddy Philippe in Canada says, Matt, you got to check out VinFast. You ever heard of them? No. It looks to be a Vietnamese electric car company. Huh. Hmm. Here's a big one. Yeah. yeah. It's a big one. Starting at under 80,000. Never heard of that before. Thanks, Philippe. Mm. Um, JR says, I ordered the Krenzel 1322 Ultimate, then ordered the Cox Reel. Nice. When removing the coupler from the high pressure hose and installing it to the Cox reel, mm -hmm. are there any issues with leaking? Uh, no, there won't be. You're just going to have to really man up to get say. that sucker off. Yeah, <laughs> You really want to do it in the vise. We've, yeah. we've shown people how to do that a bunch. Um, it's going to be on there, you know, 125 foot-pounds of torque or so, more torque than you, than you'll think. Uh, but no, you, you just tape, just retape it and retorque it back on the hose reel should be fine. Those threads are really stout on that on the uh, on the hose. Perry says, "Can we plan an OG Smokies Porsche Mountains get together soon?" There's one already scheduled. Um, Is Shane doing that again? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And Perry, if you're on Facebook, go to the Facebook group. There should be an event listed there. I'll look in just a second. Uh, Brian wants to know, have you ever checked out the jack point jack stands? Yeah, say. we talked about that a few months ago, and apparently they've gone out of business. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, jack point was always the, my recommendation. I always wanted them, just always put them in my cart. I just never pulled the trigger on them. They were like, what, 1200 bucks a set or something like that. And uh, from what I understand, they went out of business. Yeah, he says they seem cool and a good alternative for people who can't justify lift, but seem expensive for what they are. Yeah. So I guess you weren't the only one that thought that, Brian. Uh, CK Mac wants to know, does claying my car always equal marring? Or if I use mm. enough lube slash soap, it won't mar? Question mark. Nope, it'll still mar. Yeah, you, 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 you want to make good practice of, you know, of, of polishing after claying, because you're going you're gonna to mar the surface. Uh, let's see, Detailing Garage says, can you please do a video on Inside the Hex about the tools that you have right now and deep dive into each category? Yeah, I like that idea. I'm down for that. Um, let's see. 86 says, I know you hated the Purple Pig Nose M3. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't thought about that one in a while. Yeah. Uh, but surely an M3 station wagon is way cooler than the SCB junk. Minis on stilts. Mm, yeah. But it's, you know, still ugly. A big fat nose. Um, yeah. But I don't need either one of those. It, but and that's why, you know, you get the wrap. You get an F-150 extended cab. It's the way to go rather than a minivan or get like an LX 470 or whatever you know the big Land Cruiser that's what you gotta you gotta or get a Yukon Denali or something like that yeah um, Golf says do you have a recommendation for those of us seeking a portable spot free system when living in an apartment complex using all my portable goodies as best as I can but in short I wash my car in the back alley yeah I mean the CR is the most you know it's either Simple Chuck or CR, same same company. Uh, that that's but you know it's, it's like 50 pounds. You got to lug it out there all the time. I think I would just try to drive the car quickly or try to do the car in sections. Let's see. Uh, good question here from Anthony. How do you balance getting the best deal? versus being loyal for things like your mortgage and financing when it comes to the buildings. I think you mentioned you use your bank for the building. Is that just a convenience? Oh, yeah. I'm not interested in the deal at all. I don't have time for a deal. I think people that search for deals end up making way less in the long term. 
Um, I'm looking for a relationship, you know, and sometimes you got to pay more for that relationship. Um, and so um, you're wheeling and dealing, you know, looking for the best CD rate or the best, you know, best uh, um, whatever mortgage rate. It's not, it's not worth my time. You know, I figure, you know, just make sure the bank takes care of you. You need to be aware that they're not gouging you. Um, so I'm aware of what rates would be. Uh, but, um, yeah, what happens, uh, what ends up happening is then, you know, I don't pay as much in closing costs and stuff like that because they're not, you know, sticking it to me, you know, because I'm not a, you know, one-time customer. We keep assets there. We're not getting the best interest, but... Um, it's about relationships and then like Michelle went and got this house and, and didn't ask any questions just get it done so having I think I think everybody should have a, a local relationship with a local bank uh, and that where they can make decisions and then have a, a big bank like Chase or Bank of America or something like that where you can do international stuff and it's just you know better online service and things like that Greg says the LZ project was amazing can't wait to see the upcoming projects Thanks. I, I feel like it, it turned out great. We, we have to wait on a couple more things to get finished so we can go do the final walkthroughs. Uh, but it, it really turned out great. Tony wants to know what's going on at Destination OG. Anything new up there? Yeah, I just got the house painted. So all restained, all, the, all those Carpenter B holes filled and all of that. That was, that was the last major expense. Um, Jennifer's over there now, just kind of prepping for the season that's coming. We were supposed to go um, a couple weeks ago, but we, you know, we just we couldn't, we didn't get the LZ project done in time. So we'll, next content will be in July. That's where I'm going up next. Jeff C uh, also suggests a noose bomb sprinter for Jack. I love mine; it's perfect for detailing, brake work, etc. Yeah, I mean the sprinter is the best choice. You know, it's the safest. But you can't move it out of the way. You're gonna have to drive up on it. It weighs like 1,800 pounds or 1,200 pounds, some crazy amount of weight that you can't just move around. Uh, which microfiber would you use for generic paint wiping on your car, like clay bar lube? The waterless ones or drying? Um, usually for that, I do use the the waterless wash, the pluffles. You know, is what I use for that. Um, sometimes I'll use the orange, you know, drying towels, the the, the twist loop. Uh, but most of the time when I'm doing that kind of thing, I want like an extra fluff, you know, an extra grabability. And so I'm going to use the, because if you're claying, you're dislodging dirt and crap, then I want to use a, a towel that has a bit more pile or heavier pile to it, deeper pile. Grand National says, I'm looking to build a detailing cart, hose reel, yeah. pump, etc. Mm -hmm. Any recommendations on the cart itself? Well, I'd check into the new Viper cart that just came out. I don't know how that does with um, putting a, a pressure washer on it, uh, but the, the other thing hit Kyle up uh, at you know, uh, design at obsessedgarage.com and uh, have us build you a uh, Rousseau, because the Rousseau carts are probably the best carts in the world. But the Viper cart looks pretty cool. It's probably going to be pretty expensive. Does it have a price on it yet? Mm -hmm. 800 bucks? Yeah, 799 Yeah. 795 so the Viper cart will be something to look into. It certainly will be sturdy. It'll have great casters on it. But the uh, checkout, if you go to the Rousseau site, you can, get, you can find the carts on there. They've got some really cool features. Um, West, excuse me, West 32, 23. Matt, any compressor progress? Eric? Yep, just talked to them yesterday. Um, we're hoping to do late spring. We're going to do Scott's big boy, like, you know, 250 CFM monster, like 60 horsepower system. Dry ice, Scott. Yep. Right. And then we're going to do a 30 horse system in my garage. I think I'm going to do the Compact X, which is that, that, you know, that box thing. After we get that done late this year, the goal would be to make us our, you know, under $1,000 solution. I want it to be under 800 if I can help it. So yeah, we're gonna get that done this year. If it kills me. Justin says, "Is there an OG spec salt and pepper mill? If not, check out the Black Rain and White Rain ones. They're absolutely bulletproof, made in the USA, and lifetime warranty." I have the Man Kitchen version. Two ends and man, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I like the Man Kitchens a lot. The hex clad ones are decent. And um, there's one that this guy, the Wobble, was showing me. They're like. 1500 bucks a piece or something like that. The salt and salt pepper, pepper grinders. Oh, yeah. The Weber, Weber workshops. 
Weber workshops, look those up. What are they, 3,500 bucks or something? Weber workshop, pepper mill. Yeah, 580. But that's the cheap one. They had another one. It was like, yeah, so that's 580 each. So that's, you know, 1200 bucks for a set. No, no, that's for the full set. Is Silver it? is 320 for oh, okay. salt. Oh, that's 320 a deal. for pepper. But if you go to shop, go back to shop, there's, um, yeah, maybe it's Molin. Scroll down. Yeah, there you go. Oh my. Yeah. 1990 bucks. Grind Wagyu, like a boss. Wagyu Mafia. You like that Wagyu one? Wagyu Mafia, yeah. Yep. That's great. Yeah, I haven't pulled the trigger on it. Man. What is, oh, what there is you that go. one? No, the the no, EG1 no. grinder? It should yes. never. Yeah, 4100. That needs to be in the Mary JHT. Flatbird Electric. Thing? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't need that. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. Yeah, that's good. That's it looks good. like it's the same thing. It's just uh, stainless. That looks odd. That looks out of focus. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Oh, man. Uh, hey, Matt. Do you have any experience, Drew wants to know, with Apex Forged Wheels? Looking for a quality replacement for my 2020 M2 Comp. Yeah, I have. I've had a set of those. They're, they're great. I'm trying to figure out what, what car I have a set of those in the past. Maybe I'm making it up. But yeah, they're great. Wava has a set. Did you buy some for the Civic? I don't remember. Yeah. No. Maybe I've never had a set. They're great wheels. Hmm. Yeah, you, and they, they have their specs dialed in too on, on some certain cars. Uh, Christopher D wants to know, have you been driving the GT3? Yeah, I drove it the uh, last couple of days. Just kind of tooling around town here. Uh, Golf wants to know, is it worth using CarPro Descale if you're planning to use OG Decon Soap? Mm, I don't think so. Um, I haven't tried Descale yet, but um, maybe if you're, if you're just trying to reactivate your coating, maybe. Um, but I think you know, Reset can probably do a decent enough job. Uh, Tim says, Doofy is one of his favorite descriptions. <laughs> I got a lot of them. Yeah. TPD, you like this, re regarding uh, <clears throat> Chase's cost and how that might be higher now. Yeah. He said, even the dog is an appreciating asset. <laughs> very, <laughs> very OG of you, Matt. Well played. I don't know if he's worth any more than, than <laughs> when, once they get older. Uh, you make more money on the dog than you have in your cars. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I've got an uh, mini Aussie doodle. She's cute, but yeah. kind of dull. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, like dull. Chase has got a lot of personality, though. Uh, hey, Matt, I live in Chicago and have a GT4 mm -hmm. RS coming. Okay. Which daily driver would you buy? Sub 70K, thinking Civic Type R. That's from Nicholas. Yeah, maybe a um, Supra. That's a terrible visibility and don't have any room. Um, I don't know. I'm the, I, you guys always ask me that. I'm a terrible person to ask that. You know, because the M3 has its terrible pig nose and maybe a 3 Series, 4 or 3D, this 3 Series sedan, 340i or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm not good at that. All right, let's see. MRE uh, Glove says, hey, Matt, what should I do with my two-car garage? CBS, no drywall, no false roof, uh, bare bones. Is drywalling and roof worth it? Oh, yeah, 100%. Treat, completely changed the whole look and feel of the thing. So that's the first thing I would do. Wire it up, pick, pick where your outlets need to be and where your lights are gonna be and drive all that sucker for sure. Super Chat here, $20 US from Philip. Uh, are there any products you discovered during the LZ project that you'll be getting for the Destination OG house? Let's think about this. Um, Kitchenware. I already have a Blue OS set up throughout the house. How about um, the fridge? You like the fridge? Well, I mean, I like the fridge, but I have a Sub-Zero there already. Okay. Um, it would be more for this house, you know, so I'd like to do the fridge, the freezer, the ice maker, the, um, the oven, the Fulcrum Milano oven, uh, double oven. 
um, Waterstone, of course. So yeah, so yeah, Helen getting Waterstone put in there. So I'd love to have that there. Well, I'm gonna be Waterstone everywhere. I bought another, Michelle bought a house. If you're not a member inside the Hex, you can go check it out, what my plan is there. We just signed the paperwork for that today. So we're gonna have like a nice, normal, so what is it, 2,900 square foot block house. Um, it's like a nice, normal setup. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do all kinds of product development there, you know, Lutron, probably do Cree in that house instead of uh, DMF. Um, do some Waterstone, do some other, you know, Tefala. Um, we're going to build a garage out. So what I'm probably going to do is repurpose most of the garage stuff that I have in, you know, in the yarn and put it in that garage and be the envy of the neighborhood. I got special approval to extend the driveway 20 feet. So, so it has a 38 foot driveway. I'll be the only one in the neighborhood of like a thousand homes. So I'm going to be the envy of the neighborhood. It's going to be great. So I explain what we're not selling this house. It's more of an investment for Michelle, and then you know the house is right next to the school, like in the same complex. So since my kids are athletes, she's coaching there. We'll end up staying there most of the weekdays during school because they're spending so much time. They don't get home till like 9:30 every night, uh, and so. But I'm unwilling to give up this place. How long of the drive is that? It's like 39 minutes, 35 minutes, 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, Steven says, whatever happened with Amazon having Cox wheels? I saw it in the Facebook group a couple months ago. I just recently saw another copycat with yellow piping instead of the Prevost blue. <laughs> That's two know. separate questions. I was just yelling at them yesterday, you know, a couple of days ago in a meeting. They don't sell it on Amazon. It's like they're some mm -hmm. goofballs that sell for them. And they're always selling like the base version. And they're selling it at a loss, mm. which is nuts. Either that or they're lying to me. So we're working on it. I've, I've tasked them to say, hey, we still want our bespoke version. So we have custom finishes, which you, can, you, know, which you can't get on Amazon. And we have the custom swivels, because you know, the other swivel, the brass swivel, doesn't work as well. Uh, and, uh, and I'm trying to see if they can get me better pricing so we can lower the price to make it more, you know, make it closer. Because right now, it's about $80 more now that swivel is eighty dollars more, um, but you know a lot of people can't justify that. Uh, back to the kitchen here. Scott Taylor wants to know which oven trays slash baking sheets did you buy for the LZ house? Uh, U.S. Pan. You can get them pretty much anywhere, uh, but U.S. Pan is I think the best. Um, the other ones I have here at this house are the uh, the gold coated Williams and Sonoma, uh, but I think I like the U.S. Pans better. I have those in Helen. <laughs> Christopher wants to know what should be a fair price range for a quality front end PPF service? Um, front end, probably somewhere in the two to four thousand dollar range. I want to say, you know, you'd want to do that, a high impact area. I think Ryan charges like thirty-seven fifty or something like that, and he's you know world class. So somewhere in that you know two to four thousand dollar range. Uh, let's see here. Brian wants to know, how many uses could I get out of a CR portable rolling system only for rinse one car once a week? Depends on the, the, the mineral content of your water. Let's say it's average and say the TDS of 300. Um, it can do about 200 gallons. Um, if you're doing only rinse, you're probably going to use about, you know, say five gallons of water. Um, so you get 20 washes or so before you have to replace it and a TDS of 300. So I found that I always got more than that, say 20, 25, 30, maybe if you speed up your rinse. Scott says, we have the same taste in hangers. Tired of the ones that snag everything. What did yeah. you land on for a basic smooth hanger? It was the, um, the Amazon version, because Crate and Barrel doesn't have them, but Crate and Barrel has a thick black and, or white or gray hanger. Um, and so I've got the ones from um, there from Amazon and just type in like uh, I think it's like what did I do heavy heavy duty black hangers it should come up yep right there see that that see that one's from one. um, yeah it's like made in the USA I don't buy that for a second but 
you can get it in different colors and you can get it in different like up to 108 pack yeah. those are my favorite um uh, crate and barrel is probably a great option theirs might be a little bit thicker a little bit nicer but they never have them in stock and then people sent me all kinds of different cool hangers and i saved my favorites like some metal hangers that look pretty sick uh, but i don't remember what they what they were yeah. Uh, John Dempster suggested the Pugo, Pugo. Yeah, I have a set of those, but I ended up tossing them. The Man Kitchen's way better. Uh, Mike Barr says, any updates to when the knife will be coming to the store? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll be bringing it back. Um, rephrased, I saw the Active 2.3 in the Rag Company video. How are, how are you liking it so far? We haven't used it quite yet. Rephrased. Yeah, I haven't messed with it yet. That's for this weekend. Um, do you think it's possible, Roan wants to know, to do an OG spec single car garage? Sure. Yeah. We kind of made a manual yeah. into a single car garage, but it was... Yeah, you could just, you know, put a cabin ray across the back and try to keep things off the side walls. And other than maybe a custom install in the corner near where the garage door opens, and you could pull it off. Um, Aiden wants to know, any thoughts about the new M2 manual or M240 auto? Um... I just don't like the look of them. I just think they're too bulky looking for a 2 Series. I think the 2 Series peaked at the, you know, the N55, like the 2017 2 Series. Tim Kinley says it's USA Pans. I thought it was US, US Pan. Pan. We'll have to look it up here. Uh, retro Bands, any thoughts on the last generation Subaru STI? I think it's cool. I almost bought one. Yeah, maybe he's right. USA Pan. Yep, yep. he's right. USA Pan. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Matt White wants to know, does it matter which body panels you wash first? Obviously not starting at the bottom parts of the car. Well, yeah, you always want to go top down when you're washing. Um, start at the top, work your way down. If you were to use different sponges you know, or different wash pads, then I don't think it really matters. Uh, but if you're using a single pad and a single set of buckets, you're doing two bucket wash method, then it matters. Go top to bottom. If you're doing, if you're not doing that, then you can just, you know, just wash whatever section you feel like, and just toss your towel or pad and get another one. Golf says I'm planning on using Gion Can Coat. Hey. Uh, isn't mm. that what you made the video with? Yeah, saying? when I ruined all the cars in the garage with. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Evo, how yeah. long would you recommend waiting for the second coat? Right after I do the full car or wait the four hours for the first application to cure? I just don't understand can coat. It takes just as long, if not longer, to do a car than a regular coating. It's not as good as a regular coating. And uh, you have the risk of overspraying. So you gotta make sure, make sure you walk out of the garage, go outside n near nothing and spray it on your towel. Walk back in, do that section. Don't spray it in the garage because that overspray will get on everything and ruin everything. Ask me how I know. There's a video you can find. There. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ty, I guess he saw the videos of Mike F working at your old house over there. Yep. Um, he said, so did Mike F buy Matt's old house? <laughs> no. We wanted to do another uh, outdoor kitchen. And uh, Lena, who owns my old house, who bought it from me, is my, a friend of mine. And, um, you know, I always told her, if you ever want to do a, you know, an outdoor kitchen, let me know. I'm looking for another you know, example. Uh, and so she, I gave her, you know, I said, hey, I'll do, I'll sort of sponsor this. I'll do this. We'll do the labor. We'll build it for you if you just buy the stuff at my cost, as long as I can video it. Uh, and so we're getting her like a crazy kitchen for, you know, very little sum of, it's still a decent chunk of change, even at cost. But, um yeah, we're, we're, we're doing it. And it's like, it's like one of those things, one of those projects that I always wanted to do that I couldn't do, and so I'm, uh, I'm getting it done. Uh, Neil wants to know, hey Matt, which sconces did you install at the LZ house? I couldn't remember if you'd mentioned the name in the other videos. Um, the Schluter sconces. Schluter sconces. I don't know what the brand was. It was just some generic brand from you know that Laurel had found online somewhere so yeah I'm not sure what the what they what the brand was um I don't think it was from our house or anything like that it was um I'm not sure right, let's see rephrased says slim black plastic hangers with metal hooks 
are my favorite, are the best. Or black wood with metal hooks, far better. Yeah. I don't love that. I like the uh, I like the, the heavy duty ones. And then didn't collect get some of the ones with the little notches. Yeah, the so those hers were the wooden yeah. ones with the little rubberized holders oh, from Crate and Barrel. Because oh. you know girls have shirts and the whole you know the the neck is open you know bigger oftentimes and slides off. All right, Kirby says, if I'm struggling to get swirls out with perfect finish, mm -hmm. should I move to a more aggressive pad or use more aggressive compound? Uh, you need a, both pad and compound. I mean, perfect finish is not really going to get much out. Um, it's more of a finishing. It does have a, what they say, cut of four and finish of six uh, on their one to six scale. Um, but you're going to want to, I mean, you might be able to see a slight improvement on the microfiber cutting pad, but I would want a different, I'd want Jeskar or Grio's um, fast correcting cream on a Rupes microfiber cutting pad, and that'll solve your problem. Then follow with a perfect finish in the foam pad. Uh, Rephrase has a good question here. He says, when is the cutting board going back up in the store? Um, I think in the next couple weeks. So. We're working really diligently on, um, I had to run inventory really lean in order to get the building purchased and then do the, make the move. And so we look like a bunch of idiots, like we're out of stock of everything. Um, and so we're working on building or in rebuilding our inventory and everything. And I can only do it so fast um, because you, know, you only have so much money. Well, let's see, Michael Getz says, I was super stoked to see you get Adam those USA pans. They're my fave. It's so funny because you know, I'm making the video and everybody, there's all these new people just looking for mistakes. And like, we've got them, I've got them like 95% of the way there. And they're like, what about a spoon rest? And I did get him a spoon rest. I can't believe you didn't get him a spoon rest. I'm like, this kid doesn't even know what a spoon rest <laughs> is. I got him one, you know, Mike, it's just, it was in the drawer. Yeah. Um, you know, I got him trivets. I got him all kinds of stuff, but not, not everything. Right. Um, you know, he, you know, we reached a limit too with him. And he's like, look, I'm, I'm done. I'm tapped out. Uh, I'm done spending money on this for a while. Um, I'll call you when I'm ready to spend some more, which is, you know, understandable. Same, same thing with me. I mean, I, I, we, you, you, you do what you can when you can do it. Uh, and we got him. So he was so fortunate to be able to get 95% of the way there. And it's just so funny watching these comments and these dorks that, you know, that they don't have any of this stuff. And they don't have any of this figured out. And if they do, they've been working on it for 40 years. Well, I did it in three months, you know, and we can't get every single thing correct. We can't get them every single thing right off the bat. But I've, you know, I, it's, it's, it was a remarkable feat to get done what we got done in that amount of time. And he has a spoon rest. Yeah, and he has one. <laughs> Uh, Rowan wants to know, why don't you do interior details on your cars? Because he hates it. Well, for, I don't mess up the interior. I have. You know, I've done many of them on the channel. Um, but there's not really much to detail other than the leather. Uh, and then he also asks, do you guys do international shipping? Yep. Every day. Yep. We do. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. And we're working on solutions to be able to ship in country, you know, across the world. but. Yeah, we can ship it out. Choose a DHL option, you'll get it in two days. It's freaking awesome. Gordon says, I briefly saw a short video of Mike F. not recommending shark bite fittings for water plumbing, mm -hmm. but I didn't catch what he prefers instead. Do you know what his recommendations are instead? Um, either the Upanor system or, um, you know, actually gluing, glued fittings. Uh, Anthony asked about the Rivian launches. Yeah, we, we discussed that a little earlier. Yep. Anthony. Um, hey, Matt, do you recall which pads and cutting slash polishing fluid you used on the Cayman GTS 4.0? Yeah, I did uh, Griot's fast correcting cream with a microfiber cutting pad and from Rupes. I used primarily the white and yellow version of the microfiber pads. And then the finish was Sonex Perfect Finish on a yellow, Rupes yellow foam pad. That was the combo, two-step. Okay, that was his next question. You did two-step or just polish? Yep. Seems you didn't have as hard of a time as you did with the PTS Brewster. Yep, yeah, it was way easier. Plus it's white, you know, it's harder to mess up. Uh, great work on the LZ house. You guys did great as always. 
Uh, how about some carbon fiber hangers, Yoshi says. They're lighter, so you don't have to use as much rotational force to get your shirts off the hanger. The fractional functional excellence. No, can you believe, um, actually we haven't put the video up, you'll see, Colette hangs them backwards. Like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. She like takes the hanger and puts the hook on, so it looks way better, you know, well, you don't see the hook. The hook's not in the way. I'm like, what are you talking about? You mean she actually hangs it backwards? Correct. Like, hmm. And you can't get it off. Interesting. You're like, freaking, I'm like, this makes, that makes no sense. I'm all for, you know, function. Right. But that was ridiculous. I was like, you gotta, we're not doing that. I said, you're gonna have to do that after I leave. I'm not doing that. Oh, man. Uh, What's your guys' recommendation for a sacrificial layer on a ceramic coating? Uh, I like OG drying aid. So you would top it with whatever the topper is, like Gliss or Halo or, not Halo, uh, XO, uh, and then just use, use uh, OG drying aid every time you wash. Uh, White says, any updates on OG, OG Canada? Yep, we're going up there next month to talk about it with them. Might, hopefully later yep. this year is the plan. Yep. Uh, Andy, are there any limitations or delays on shipping MSS Plus cabinets? I don't think so. I, don't I think, think so. they're pretty readily available at the moment. Which Email is design. Gosh, yeah, design they'll be able to give you an exact for. update. Uh, Neil wants to know, hey Matt, have you ever taken creatine monohydrate for working out? Many, for many, many years. Yep. Yep. I find creatine works really well for me. But it does help you, you know, make you, you know, retain a lot of water. Uh, I see if I'm an Inside the Hex member, you get free shipping. Is that only uh, domestic or international as well? Only domestic. Uh, hey Matt, when are you guys planning to do the giveaway, I guess the garage giveaway install? Um, well, he's building his house, so it'll probably be either late this year or early next year. That's from Deepak, and we're actually going to do a, a garage giveaway in the summer at Deepak. Yep. So that person may end up getting theirs done before. This other person does. We'll see. And we do a big giveaway. We have all kinds of cool things you can buy and, you know, buy, of course, digital entries and stuff. You can see Chase, he's, uh, he likes to be in it. Yeah. In the middle of it. Uh, what's the next Wash and Talk? When can we expect that? This weekend. Which car? Mm, probably my GT3. It's the dirtiest. Uh, Neil says, Matt, good to know this about the creatine. Uh -huh. I've been taking it for a few months and I've noticed a huge difference in energy and mass. Yeah, I mean, I've never found any energy difference from, from um, I felt like I could do like an extra rep or half rep. Yeah. You know, but yeah, you, you will retain quite a bit of water. Uh, let's see. White says, hey, Matt, people love your hex lights rant on the <laughs> Rag Company video. That was hilarious. I'm surprised they didn't hate me for it. I need to go check it out. Yeah, I watched that video. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Anthony's good, I like him. Yeah. Uh, Wob is working on a video right now, aren't you? Yeah. So Anthony and I's yeah. wash talk. It's pretty good wash and talk, I think. Oh. It's, that's, our, that's our move, is to do um, you know, interviews while washing together. Yeah. You know, it was a pretty good thing. I said, you know, we're, I said to him, I said, let's just, just do it and we'll chat about things and we can you know, bust each other's chops about different processes and stuff like that and kind of work on it together and it was, it was cool. Which car is that on? I saw the Drift. Evo. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's one of those Evo guys. Mm-hmm. The Evo's grown on me. I'm really... You've been driving it a lot. I really like it. Uh, Brad says, yep, the Hex Light rant was hilarious. <laughs> I gotta watch it. I don't even remember. I don't even know what I said. We found some... Where was it? It was at uh, LZ's place. He's got some over there, actually. Uh, on yeah. tour. Uh, ooh, he's gonna love this question. All right. CK Mac wants to know, how does Maddie organize his phone apps? I need some mm. folder ideas. Okay. It's all got to be on one page, first of all. That's well, I've got a second page I need. Oh. I got to get, get moving on. I got some new things I wow. need to find a spot for. You are slipping. Yep, yep. That means you got too much stuff if you got to get on the second page. So, yeah, it's on the second that. page, Meta View, which I bought those glasses. You know, the Meta glasses that you can take so pictures no of. on the second page yet. InBody no. is the new scale I bought. Okay. I can get rid of this Microsoft Authenticator. I needed it for something. Yeah. Are we signing get, something? Get rid of that. Delete that. I had to add WhatsApp because they use that at um, LZ's compound. So I'll move that over. Let's just clean it up while we're out of here. Yeah. We'll move that over to, um, we'll put that in social media file. Um, SRAM, I added that. 
I did put TikTok on my phone because we now have a TikTok profile. Make sure to go follow us. What's the handle for that? Obsess. Obsess Garage underscore. Yeah, we have three. So yeah, we have three. Two yeah. of them. Two of them we can't get in. Okay. What the heck is a journal? What is that? Journal. How did where did a journal even come from? I don't want that. How did I get on my phone? Mm-hmm. Let's get rid of journal. Move that. Big time. Google or um, Apple Home. That's the start. Right? Yeah, my, this is my water delivery. So I've got oh, iMovie. I don't need that either. I put that on because I was doing one little edit. Told you CK Mac, you love yep, this yep. question. All right, so I have a folder for shopping, That's a folder for folder utilities, for folder for business, okay. folder for information, folder for entertainment. You do all your folders first. Uh, the, except for social media, which I use often. So the okay. social media is down on the bottom left. Okay. So then I have the apps that I have on the home page: camera, mm-hmm. Life 360, Google Maps, mm-hmm. then settings, Blue OS, Title, and Spotify. I use those all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, notes, Chrome, Google Chrome, ADT Control, uh, which I'll probably yeah, get move, rid of that soon. move move that to utility soon. Calculator, clock, YouTube app, YouTube Studio, which is a you know content creator version. Shopify, Instagram, Facebook. Oh yeah, my Fitness Pal. I don't need that on the homepage either. And then my bottom is phone, text, um, uh, email, and Apple Mail and and calendar on the, you know, on the on the whatever pinned version. So I'll get this cleaned up after yeah. this. Dustin says, Journal is the new Apple native app for journaling. They added it through software update to everyone's phones. So that's where it came from. Mm. I need to get these notifications off of my frickin'. I don't want these notification business on WhatsApp from the LZ thing. Okay, that's good. What is this yeah, chat we've, business? We've lost them now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, X Pravidox says, why do you still have the Raptor? I thought the Rivian replaced it. Nope, nope, we have both because, you know, like Michelle took the Raptor this weekend because um, they, uh, yeah, you did lose me. I've got red all over here. I got too many. Got some voicemails. I don't like that. What the heck is that? 352. Some sort of automotive freight, right, Motion see. Industries. I'll send that over to, to yeah, somebody. Yeah. To Ken. Will we be getting the new Viper Cart at OG? Deepak wants to know. I don't know. I gotta see what it's like. Uh, Stint Placer says no ways. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. No, that's no stupid. Ways guy. I don't understand the point of ways. Um, I just put a radar detector in if I need that. Yeah, I got a little cleaning up to do. But I, I think I do. Do I have ways on here? Nope. Nope. I, I know lots of you use that. I never got the point of it. So, oh, I do have ways, but in a deep in a folder. I just freaking deleted it. I haven't used it ever. Remove that app. This is good. I'm gonna get this cleaned up here today. Escort live. That's dumb. All right. Let's see. Jeff W says I hang my hangers backwards too. Only because growing up, that's how our closet shelf worked. So I'm programmed to do it that way. No, don't do that. Stop doing that. Deprogram. Uh, why are the rag company guys so obsessed with rinseless? I don't get it unless you don't have access to water line and driveway. Yeah, I don't know. Lots of people like rinseless. To me, it's dirtier. Uh, Craig wants to know, when is Mike F's outdoor kitchen scheduled? Mm, it's not yet. I'll leave that up to him. Um... Yo, Kenny R says, on the shelf behind you, uh, yeah. press all bottles, GSF, and what are the other two going towards the Cox reel? That's Carpa Reset and Decon Soap. OG Decon Soap. Um, and the older bottle, that black skin yeah, bottle. Yeah. Um, let's see, if I finish with OG Drying Aid, uh, I don't understand here. Is need, do I need to use Wet Coat or Carpro Hydro 2? No, neither. Don't use those two. Uh, let's see. I've recently been watching the Rag Company videos and noticed that Anthony looks and sounds really similar to Tent Studio on YouTube. Wondering if it's the same guy or a long lost term. Mm, no, not the same guy. 
Jeff W says, have you gotten any metabolic stats now that you've been on the five prone prong plan for a while now? No, not yet, but I would like to have a blood work workup done at some point here. Uh, Aaron, go back to your apps here. Do you pay, pay for MyFitnessPal premium? And if so, is it worth it? I do, and it depends. If you're tracking macros, then yes. Um, but I'm not doing that since I've gone carnivore, so I'm probably, I'm probably that's a good point. I need to go cancel my membership. Uh, Jonathan T wants to know, did you ever try any of the Pure Colon Est products? No. Those are the ones we got from overseas. Oh, Purist. Yeah. yeah. I gave them to Jeff. Nothing was, uh, nothing they were, he was super interested in, so I didn't pursue it any further. Uh, Luke P says, speaking of radar detectors, which one would you recommend, and also which dash cam would you recommend? So I don't do dash cams, um, but I like the either the Escort Passport Max Redline or whatever they call it, Redline Max or something like that. That's what I have in the M3. Uh, and then uh, the Unit N, um, I guess was the new one, the R9, R7, R9. And who's your, what's that guy's name? Uh, that? Vortex radar is the guy to go listen to. So don't take my advice. I just go to Vortex. Whatever he tells me to get, that's what I get. Because yeah, he says there aren't many informative videos about them. I don't know yeah, what to Vor get. Yeah, Vortex Radar. Go to vortexradar.com. Uh, Ariel's a friend of mine. He's, an, he's like the subject matter expert on the idea. Uh, Steven says, I have a 2011 STI. Okay. I want to know the best phone holder for driving. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't do fall on the phone holders. Mine just sits on the passenger seat. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Brian says, hey, Matt, I think you still need to reconsider huh? matching your brake calipers with your interior stitching slash seat belts. No, that's freaking stupid. It makes <laughs> zero sense. What, I don't understand what your seat belts have to do with your freaking brake calipers. I, mean, I can't even see my seat belts right now. What's the point? And my seat belts to match my interior. That's a good plan. Yeah. Uh, Matt D says, I guess Vortex does dash cams too? Yes. Oh, okay. There you go. All right, that's all the questions we got for today. We can work through them. Man, I feel like a zombie right now. Yeah. <laughs> I probably look like a zombie too. Like, I just feel weird. Like, just because I didn't get my, um, I didn't take my nap today. I mm -hmm. had to go straight to the freaking pick out all the options for Michelle's house. By the way, so I can't, I can't even imagine. So the villages, right, is is the biggest retirement community in the world, and they and they're doing this Middleton thing. It's okay. Really freaking cool. Did you watch the video inside the hex? I did today. It's yeah. Just way cool. I mean, not what I would want if it wasn't like a second thing. Not what I would want if I had to pay for it. But it's like Michelle's salary is like found money, you know. And so it'll end up being, a, I think, a pretty sound investment that she basically just pays the mortgage and pays the bills of the house. Um, but the process you go through, you, I mean, you have to pick out a lot of stuff. Okay. Like the, the spec sheet was, I think, 13 legal size pages of, you know, single line stuff. And um, so they book, it's three five hour design appointments. Ooh. I said, I don't need that. And so we booked one three hour design appointment. I freaking killed it. And we did, a, we did a one hour follow up this morning to just go over everything. Mm -hmm. I only changed one thing of my original changes. And I guarantee you our house is gonna look way better than everybody else's. I felt I was feeling real proud of myself. <laughs> the lady was so excited to like have a day off, you know, because she said the last people she met with, it was meeting number three and they were six hours in and they're only 50% done. Mm -hmm. And they're yelling at each other. She said, I sat here for 30 minutes just them going back and forth on whether or not they were gonna do a pool. Mm. They weren't doing a pool, and then they just couldn't decide whether they weren't gonna do a pool, and after that 30 minutes, they didn't do a pool. And she's not paid commission or anything, so she's on you know, salary or whatever, so she doesn't really care, but um, it, was, it was actually, I, I could really understand how, you have to pick out your countertops, your, you have to pick out your cabinet colors, and each thing, I mean, they have like an entire room full of tile. You have to pick out your, your, 
And, and every single person does luxury vinyl plank. You want to get me on a freaking rant? There's nothing luxury about plastic fake flooring. Nothing. I don't care who, you, can, you cannot convert me on it. I guarantee you some people are going to say, you know what, Matt? It's better. It doesn't scratch. It's easier to install. They're going to have all this nonsense. It looks just like it. You wouldn't even be able to tell. I can tell. It's freaking plastic. Not doing it. You've lost your mind. So they don't have any hardwood floors, but they at least had some like decent like large format tile that we could choose. Okay. But there's some quirk things like I can't do different. If you did LVP, you can do different tile in the bathrooms. But if you do tile, I'm like, well, I want to do different tile in the bathrooms. I'm like, well, I think we can do that. And then, nope, we can't do that. I'm like, what, what's the difference? Yeah. You just go from one tile to another. So, well, we don't know how to make the transition. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So the, but it was actually much nicer. There was a lot much, like they had nicer like lighting, like actual light fixture choices. And you know, I'll be ripping out all the faucets and all that crap for Waterstone anyway. But, yeah. but so if the, like people go there and like every single, you have to pick out the kitchen faucet out of like 30. Yeah. You have to pick, and you can't, and they don't even have it there. You have to like pick from the screen. Uh, and then you have to pick out like your drawer pools. You have to pick out your backsplashes. You have to pick out, you know, your wall color. They've got 50 different, they hand you like the Florida paints, you know, with a billion choices. Okay. Um, you have to pick out the floor color of the lanai. You know, I picked it in 12 seconds, you know. I'm like, give me that thing. She's like, you know, I'm like, give me the thing. I'm like, shh, 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 shh. Uh, this one. Done. Held it up, done. <laughs> it's gonna look amazing. You know, so the, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty wild to sit there and, you know, have them try to talk me into LVP. I said, absolutely not. No, 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 no. Luckily, they paint the walls flat, so that's good. Don't put some stupid sheen on the wall. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's pretty fun. And then I was able to extend the driveway, or extend the garage four feet. So the garage, like this garage is 26 feet deep. No, 24 feet deep. This one's gonna be 28 at the shortest point, 32 at the longest point. Not as wide though, this one's 35 feet wide, it's 31 feet wide. Uh, but still, you know, it's gonna be pretty freaking cool. It's like my dream house 15 years ago. You know, like a decent size, 2,900 square foot, single story. That was the big change we made, is we're gonna do a two story, but two stories because it's a pretty cheap. It's not cheap, but it's a cheap house. You know, because they, you know, and they cut costs on everything. So everything's cost cut it, cut. The cabinets are total junk. And they're like, they went to Wellburn and said, um, all right, what's your cheapest? Let's make it a little bit worse. <laughs> um, it's like your Corvette seats. Yeah, yeah, the cabinets are not great. But, uh, but they're going to look the part. They just aren't good. Um, and so I'm thinking we're going to rip that all out. But again, this is a, like, the school night house and then... Um, I'm thinking about maybe turning this into a, a destination OG. Maybe put that, put that in the comments in the video. Would you consider if I put my house up, since that'll become our primary house very likely, um, if I put this house up for um, you know, one week a month, and uh, let's say it was like 4,000 bucks or something for the week, um, would that be something of interest to come tour HQ, go to Disney, go to, you know, do all kinds of stuff around the area, maybe I get a car for here to, you know, to, you know, to, to rent. Um, and then that you can come and experience, you know, what it's like to live like you know, Matt Mormon. I'll lock, you know, just hope you don't sniff my underwear and stuff, but other than that could be a cool experience, take you mountain biking or something, you know, that could be cool. All right, a couple quick things that got added here since we, uh -huh. since you got on your rant right here. What was that rant Middlewood about? configurator and luxury vinyl. Oh, LV, oh yeah. my God. Uh, Jonathan T. was kind enough to send us a super chat here, for $4.99. Love the content, love the channel. Oh, thanks. Uh, how do you avoid your drying towels being clogged with drying aid? You have to use um, rags to riches as your detergent. And if you really are concerned about it, want to really maximize your towels, right after using them, you should put rags to riches in a bucket and throw it in a wet you know, bucket. I don't do that. Um, but the rags to riches is the key. That detergent helps to remove it. Uh, Brian says he can't find hex lights on our site anywhere. <laughs> Keep searching. Uh, Kurt says, you mentioned on the LZ project, 
you run the Apple TV to TV, then receiver. Correct. I have a Sony A80C uh -huh. and run Apple TV through a receiver, then eARC to the TV. Well, it's not eARC if you're running it from the receiver to the TV. You might be running into the eARC input, but it's not utilizing ARC. If you're running, you're switching. If you're using HDMI switching, the audio is going to the receiver, the receiver is grabbing the audio, and then it's sending the video to the TV. If you, the only, what eARC, eARC is a two-way, you know, communication system that sends audio back and forth. Um, and so you're not going to send, you know, you're not sending the audio to the TV because you're, you're essentially using, you'd be using your TV speaker, or using your, your, your surround sound speakers. Uh, Brad says, hey Matt, been meaning to tell you, I've seen you or Mike Gaff cooking with ingredients from Organic Valley in a few uh -huh. videos. Yep. My father works for them, so it's cool to see you Ooh, using their cool. stuff. Yeah, I buy their milk, I buy their butter, I buy all kinds okay. of cheese, all kinds of stuff from them. Uh, Brad Hone, our buddy out west, said he would for sure do Destination OG in Lady Lake. He wouldn't sniff anything. <laughs> um, Office Patina caught you, he said you use the rent word, be careful there. You said rent. Not use what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. That's a good catch. Uh, Elliot says, This is my first dialed in podcast. I really enjoy watching. Look forward to all upcoming projects and videos. Sincerely, Elliot from the UK. Uh, and last but not least, here from Rephrase Tidal versus Spotify. Is Tidal worth it? Yep. I have both. Um, I like Spotify for podcasts and then Tidal for any music listening. So, yeah, Tidal. High res, especially since they added FLAC, you know, HQ, you know, high quality files. So they have MQA and FLA, FLAC FLAC files in you know, 24, 192, 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. Um, I like Tidal a lot. I haven't yet to find anything that I couldn't listen to that wasn't available on Tidal. All right, so that's it. We will be back next week I believe yeah should be we're both here the following week you'll be gone to California but we'll be oh, back next week yeah yeah right, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll host one from there we'll see oh, where we're fun. at yeah all right cool. thanks everybody, thanks, everybody. See ya.